neuroplasticity is the brain and nervous system's ability to change in response to experience. The brain is unique and the nervous system is unique among all the organs in the body because it can actually direct its own changes, which is incredible. Humans, unlike other species, can do this throughout the lifespan. Other species have neuroplasticity just early in life. Children and teens and young adults, their brain is far more plastic than people say age 30, 40, 50, 80, 90. But even people 30, 40, 50, 80, 90 can modify their brain circuitry. It just requires a couple specific steps that one has to take and we can discuss those. I really wanna drive home the idea and the, the truth really that the only way we can get neuroplasticity, these changes to our brain as adults, is if we direct them for ourselves. I think now with all the challenges in today's society, this is especially important. We, with kids, we can just expose them to ideas and their brains will be shaped around those ideas mm -hmm. and behaviors. It's, that's a real thing. The young brain is extremely plastic. It was designed to be customized to its experience. The adult brain is less plastic. And therefore, if you want to make changes to your brain as a young adult and as an adult and, and throughout your lifespan after childhood, you have to direct them for yourself. And so if you want to change it, you got to put in some work and that work will, won't feel great. But the good news is, so work by Eric Knudsen, uh, now retired, but colleague of mine in the Department of Neurobiology showed that there are two things that can make neuroplasticity as robust in adulthood as it is in childhood. The first one is chunking. Break down the learning into very short bouts so that you can capture maximum release of acetylcholine and norepinephrine. How do you do that? Well, they published another study showing that if the incentive is very high, in other words, if you have to learn if you want to eat or if you have to learn if you want to live, brain circuits then are willing to change very dramatically. Let's say I want to change my ability in anything, a motor skill. I, I can't shoot free throws very well, or I want to learn a new language, or I want to learn a new topic in medicine. There are two components to self-directed adaptive plasticity. First, you have to trigger the plasticity, and the triggering of plasticity comes about through very focused, deliberate effort. You absolutely have to focus very hard on what it is you're trying to learn, and there tends to be a feeling or an association of strain with that. And that's because noradrenaline, also called adrenaline, is released in the brain and body when we focus our attention. And it tends to make people feel kind of agitated. And some people think, oh, I don't like this. That doesn't feel good. But that's actually your brain queuing up these systems in the brain stem and in the body. Those neurons are then marked for strengthening. The effort process itself won't feel good, but cognitively, this is the beauty of having a human brain, cognitively, you can say that agitation, that's me getting better. There that's me heading up the, up the ladder, grabbing these rungs. And you can, with time, you will start to associate more and more of a sense of reward, a sense of pleasure with that. The actual rewiring, the strengthening of those connections happens during periods of deep sleep, in particular, slow wave sleep, Stages three and four, for instance, for the sleep aficionados, although a little bit during REM sleep, but mostly during slow wave sleep. And this is based on recent work that was just published in Cell Reports. Let's say I, I learned, I'm trying to learn a, a free throw or a tennis swing. That triggers the, the plasticity, but the actual plasticity starts to occur during these periods when maybe I lie down and take a nap, or maybe I'm eating my lunch and I'm not thinking about that at all. 